It is so nice to have you. Please go ahead, introduce yourself, leave where you're from, how old you are, down in the comments. I want you girls to be able to connect. I want you to be able to link up. I want you to make some new connections, network, um, find some girlfriends to hang out with and, you know, um, make that money with. And if you are returning, thank you for being patient. Thank you for all the love and support. So we're coming back with a Marrying Millions um is this our fourth this might be our fourth and fifth couple we have another katie <laughs> and this one um we're gonna do two different couples only because they don't have much substance to their relationships um and i'm gonna tell you why so i just went ahead and rolled them up into a one video so let's get started we're gonna get started with reese and noni and um, forgive me if I'm saying her name incorrectly or Nani, Noni, Nani. Um, I'm gonna say Nani. And so they have a, a bit of an age gap. Um, Nani is in her late 40s, a beautiful, successful woman. Um, we're gonna go ahead and introduce her right now. I thought it would be fun to host a little kind of wine and cheese evening up at the house. And I adore my crazy skater boyfriend but reese and i come from extremely polarized backgrounds we really need to be better at kind of cross-pollinating our lives i kind of picture you with somebody who's like you know not a skater but like a, a ceo or something he was some old dude that's just like sitting at a desk all day like that's so fun mm -mm. I, I said i am the old dude that sits at a desk all day like you know, i already do that and then we also have Reese. Now, Reese is in his 30s, I believe. I really can't tell. Maybe it's in his early 30s, late 20s. You know when guys have that unmaintenanced, um, dirty, rugged beard kind of. Like, yes, there's some beards that are well-maintained and clean and sanitary, but Reese's beard is not one of those, so he looks way older than um, Nani, honestly. But um, we're going to meet him right here. I believe he's 31, 32. Uh, listen here. Uh, let's get into it. I don't know why Noni invites me to these wine and cheese things when I don't drink wine, I don't eat cheese. Thank you live near here? Yeah, I live at like this skate house, a bunch of skateboarders, kind of like flop house. The time I went to Noni's house, it blew my head away. I was just gone. Like having a bathtub or a nice uh, clean bed. Pretty glad to get into the house because before I was uh, sleeping in my truck. I was like homeless for a while. Okay, so I wanted to touch on this couple because I do have a lot of women who state, fancy, how old is too old for sugaring? How old is um, too old to want to get married, to have standards, to have um, requirements and stuff like that? And I don't believe that your age um, plays a factor. The only thing age plays a factor in is um the amount of little patience i'm gonna use patience how little patience you may have putting up with the bs so the age plays a heavier role on the woman versus the man and yes i know that you've heard it before oh well i'm too old to be a sugar baby or whatever um at the end of the day we're all grown women None of us are babies. All of us should have our things together. And yes, I'm not going to say that we're independent in any kind of way because that's, you know what I mean, we deserve to be taken care of by a man. But I do highly suggest and rec recommend that you have your own stuff. So to some extent, independent as a woman being able to stand on your own two feet. So you're not in a position where you are 
used and manipulated and controlled due to someone's income or lack their lack thereof and so uh, um yes a lot of men may say oh i like younger women or this that or the other and literally if you are looking for a husband if you are truly looking for a husband and that husband um that man his one of his main criterias is to be in your 20s you should really think twice about moving forward with him because say you are within his age category you're not going to be in your 20s forever the only thing that attracts him to you is your age understand that once you spend your youth and you use your youth up on this man he's going to be you know after the next youngest thing because it's more of a fetish than him truly being attracted to the person that you are so women you know what i mean especially my classic you know more mature more experienced women never fret and don't fear um I do not believe that, you know, age, you know what I mean, is going to cause you to miss out on a good man. If he is a great man and you are a beautiful, you t I mean, a beautiful woman who takes care of yourself, who is very feminine, who is submissive, who knows how to inspire, encourage, um, and encourage her man, then there shouldn't be an issue. He should be able to say, you know what, she looks like 20 year olds and you know that means that she's going to continue to age gracefully and you know I love her for her and you know this is the woman I want to be with. So no I don't believe that there is an age um, cap when it comes to sugaring um, or being able to attract a high value man. Um, now let's get to a Nani. Nani is in her late forties. Um, as you could see, um, she is very successful. When I say this woman lives nice, but because of the things that she's been through in her life, such as success, a lot of you women do not understand the more successful you are, just like referring to John T, the harder it is, no matter how beautiful you are, no matter how youthful you look, no matter what you have to offer, it makes it that much harder to be able to attract a man that makes more than you and that will feel like a man with his success compared to your success. It's going to always be, um, not saying always going to be, but it's, you know, more likely chance that you're going to come in contact with men who are, you know, pretty okay. They do have, they live a pretty nice lifestyle, but since you're so successful, you know what I mean? It's hard for him to see himself as being a provider and alpha males like to know that they are needed and they like to know that they're able to provide something that you can't quote unquote provide for yourself so nani because of her success because of you know what i mean um the different relationships she's been in and out of um as we see her choice in men reese has been very um, she has settled within her choice of men. Reese, um, is homeless. <laughs> As you can see, he has no children. So if you are a man, a healthy man at that, you, you're not disabled, um, and you have nobody depending on you. There is absolutely no reason that you're living out your car. There's no reason that you don't have a place to lay your head. It's no reason why you're in and out of homeless shelters. And there's no reason why you're healthy enough to find time to be able to skateboard at the skate park, hang out with friends, you know what I mean, and date. It's like, dude, you need a job. You need a trade. You need to learn some kind of, you know, skill so you can become something. Now, because Reese has never been required to be anything and you can tell this from his family let's go ahead and introduce his family <laughs> because i don't think reese's family should dictate the terms of our relationship i know that i want a grandchild from you i don't believe that you don't want to have a baby i don't yeah. believe that you're not telling the truth mm -hmm. i think it's pointless being here my son wanted me to be here. He wanted us to get everybody together. I don't care if I'm invited back or not, and I don't care if she likes me or not. They are just worlds apart in so many ways. The, the finances and the age difference. Now, I introduced Reese's family because when there is an age gap between when the woman is older and the man is significantly younger, um, 
the family is involved within the younger man's life. Why is this a cougar after my son? And that's the question that needs to be asked. If they know that their son ain't not, um, ain't no good, their son is trash because that's the child, the man or the the grown boy that they raised. They want to know what is this beautiful, successful, mature woman trying to do other than control him. If a man doesn't have his own, and that's why I say it's so important. If a man does not have his own and he's depending on the woman, then the control is in the woman's hands. And she is the masculine role. She is the provider. She has final say so. And basically, he could be easily manipulated. Hence why there are a lot of men who, you know, may be wealthy or not, but may make more money than the woman. And because the woman might not have, you know, resources or finances to take care of herself, or she has mouths to feed, or she just has other things that's preventing her from, you know, being able to live on her own, that man takes the role as the one being controlling. So that's why I will always state, you need to have your own. You need to have your own money. You need to have your life together. You need to have your priorities straight. And if you don't have this as a start for a level up, there is no reason why you should be in a relationship or you should be seeking a man to provide this for you because that's how you put yourself in a bad situation. And that situation is if you don't do something he wants you to do, he's going to take that money. If you don't sit here and I've had coaching calls where girls saying fancy, um, he bought me a brand new car and he got upset at me and he took it back. He didn't buy you a brand new car. He bought himself a brand new car and he allowed you to use it. It doesn't belong to you. Never take anything that does not belong to you solely. Never allow a man to pay for something that he's able to reverse charges on or he's able to cancel out or report fraud. You're setting yourself up for failure. Been there, done that, fancy. How do you know? I've been there. And I'm trying to prevent you from going there. So in this situation, Nani has the money and his family, which is a trash family, has a problem with it. Wants to know, why are you wanting, what do you want with my son? You know what I mean? And their main issue is that she cannot have kids. Versus their main issue needing to be that, why do y'all have a man coming from your family, a son and a brother, a uncle, Okay, the only man, because that's their issue, the only man that can carry on the name, why is he in his 30s and he's sleeping in a car? If you cared so much about this man, why did you not raise him to be independent? Why did you not raise him to be hardworking? Why did you not raise him to be able to be a provider where he could even afford a child? This man is homeless and his mom is concerned with the baby. That's the last thing that you should be concerned with. But the thing is, when you're dealing with a woman who's significantly older, not even significant, if there's an age difference within a woman and a man, it's not just like, oh, these men have fetishes. Always, always, always. If there's an age difference, then the woman's making more money. You're not going to see a wealthy young guy with a broke older woman. You're not going to see it. You're just not going to see it. <laughs> like... You're not going to see it. Not say, Yeah, you're not going to see it. Let me just say that. <laughs> you're not going to see it. So with that being said, his mom is having an issue that um, Nani due to a, um, how do you say, um, a disease that she had or a sickness that she contracted, a virus, she had to um, get a hysterectomy or she had to, you know, something like that where now she's not able to produce, she's not able to have a child. And so um, she's feeling inadequate. But the thing is, this is what I want to ask you girls. Why do so many women not love themselves enough to want better for themselves and want more for their lives where they just settle for a warm body to lay next to, drama within the family, and a man using you, taking advantage of you, getting tired of you, and leveling up from you and taking that to the next woman. Now, Nani, being a businesswoman, 
or you being a businesswoman or anybody being a businesswoman, if you have a business, a company that you built from the ground up, that you put so much blood, sweat, and tears into, are you going to hire someone to be your accountant? Are you going to hire someone to run your business? Are you going to hire someone to work for you who has no experience? They have no idea what they're doing. But you want to give them a chance because you feel as though they have a great personality? No. And if you do, you're making irresponsible business decisions. And you should reconsider because that can lead and end up in disaster. You're not going to put someone who's not qualified in the position of running something like a business, like your business, something that you work so hard for. So why would you not put the same energy and have the same mindset when it comes to your business's future and longevity up there with your future, your love life, your happily ever after? This man is homeless. And it's not because he has babe, child support coming out of his pockets. It's not because he has kids to feed. It's not because he has responsibilities. It's not because he's disabled. It's because he's lazy, because he has a lack of drive, because I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of going to blame it on the family too, because of how he was raised and not wanting more or not ever being required to have more. His family is focused on passing their name on and his, their child, their son reproducing and a broke person raising and bringing into life another broken person that they're not even considering how is Reese going to take care of this child? How is Reese going to keep, you know, um, a roof over this child's head, food in this child's mouth? And you know what I mean? Um, an education and you know what I mean? A great healthy childhood. But they're mad at Nani because she's older, she has the money and they see as though that can control their son and they're disgusted by it because she can't physically have children. Hmm. But what can this man do for Nani? If she could have his child, if she was able to get pregnant, if she was able to do a surrogate type of thing where, because she can afford it, where she can sit here and, you know, that could be his biological baby and he can, she could pay for a surrogate. What is she going to do other than be a single mom and raise up Reese to be a, a civilian? Basically, Noni wants to be Reese's mother, raise him into the man that his mom didn't raise. And as soon as that man has any kind of anything going for him, he's going to take his biological child, if he even cares about that child, or leave that child because he can't afford it, and go on to the next woman. Like, how many times do we have to play this same story with different people? And it's not even only with the women who are significantly different you know in age ranges it's with women who you know maybe two three four years five years older than you know their boyfriend or whatever they're dusty and you're working two jobs taking care of kids and he's at the house and you're happy and you're happy because you have somebody to text you hey babe what's going on I miss you I love you. Could you cash at me? Can I go out with the boys? Do you mind if you send me money to put gas in the car so I can make some moves? Like, so we're going to go down that road again. If you love yourself and you want more for yourself and you understand what you deserve, then you're not going to allow loving the wrong person to ruin your life you're not gonna allow just loving someone just to have someone to love you know what I mean take more years of your life because it's always going to end in disaster do you believe that Noni and Reese would be together if Noni had no money 
Yes, Reese is like, oh, it's not about the money. He barely even wants to move in. But that's him now. Money changes everyone. Like everyone. In good, bad, happy, sad. You're more responsible. You're less responsible. You're more, you know, manipulative. You're more honest. Money changes people. So yes, Reese ain't never had nothing. He's been happy being a nobody. But do you truly believe that as the relationship progresses, if Reese did have a baby with this man, that the family will, would all of a sudden, you know, take in Noni with loving arms? Or do you think the family is going to be the one to use Noni? Do you feel as though the family is not going to be a issue within the relationship in the future? Or do you feel as though Noni's just going to be oblivious and happy that her man is living with her? And no, it's not going to work out. And with her, love is not enough to sustain a relationship. Love is not enough to sit here and carry a marriage. Love is not enough. And with Nani already feeling inadequate where she would even be with someone who's homeless. That's like one of you girls going out um, on the highway, pulling up to the stoplight and telling a homeless guy, you ain't got no place else to go. Nothing better to do. Get in here. I'm going to take you home, shower you up, clean you up. And you know what I mean? Do the Nicki Minaj. Do the Nicki Minaj, where she sat here and had Safari. He had, you know, a whole ball. He, he's balding. She takes him in. He's a nobody. She cleans him up. She gets him a hair transplant. She does all this for him, for him to up and leave her and go into the next. And now he's a celebrity known as Nicki's ex. And now he's his own star. Do you think he felt, oh, I just hurt Nicki and used her? No. And then here Nicki is again with a an S offender it's like the more successful you are it doesn't matter how beautiful you are it doesn't matter what your status is these men especially men who have nothing to offer they will cling to you they will gravitate to you they will in the beginning make everything happy happy joy joy and then take what they can take and leave and if they're lazy enough to be okay with and settle you know what I mean? Then they're just going to sit here and live off of you. And, and if you're okay with it, then hey, what works for you works for you. But listen, there are exceptions to the rules. But the rule is that once you build a man, once you provide for a man, that man will resent you because men's nature is to be a man. Even if he doesn't have it, he will be being a man to someone else. A man is only as faithful as his options. And if nobody wants him, that's why he's faithful to you, not because he loves you. So let's get into Katie and Colton. Now, Katie's ex-husband is an athlete and they have children and whatever. And let's go ahead and meet her. I believe she's in her 40s also. I believe she's in her 40s. And see, and I continue to state that the age issue is more of a mental Thing when it comes to us it's more of a mental thing because our biological clock is running even if we don't want any more kids even if you know what I mean we're constantly doing anti-aging we're constantly thinking about not wanting to die alone we're constantly thinking about you know having that husband having that family having that lifestyle you know what I mean being able to be that wife and the older we get the more tired we get I'm not saying that we look tired. I'm not saying anything. We physically, I don't care how good uh, genetics you have. I don't care how much plastic surgery you get. I don't care how much you have a baby face. I don't care how young you look. We all, our organs, a uh, 15-year-old uh, liver is a 15-year-old liver. A 30-year-old liver is a 30-year-old liver. Like, you know, a 45-year-old lungs is a 45-year-old lungs. You're going to mentally be tired. Internally, you're going to be older. And it's going to put you in a position where you're just looking for love, even if it's not real love. You're going to be looking for someone to nurture, especially if you don't have kids and you want kids. You're willing to have kids with anybody. You just want to be a mother because that's how we were wired. And we tend to, as we get older, overlook the 
immediate red flags and think, you know what? It's not that bad. I can take it on because we want to love them past their circumstances. We want to hold them down. We want to think that, you know what, at this time, we're too old. What are my options? So does age play a factor? Yes, it plays a huge mental factor. And if age is a situation when it comes to men, then that man did not want you from the beginning and and you dodged a bullet because that means if you was in that age range as soon as you're not in that age range anymore he wasted your youth and he's on to the next youngest hottest thing i don't care what people's opinions state that you're in the danger zone that you're um in no man's land that's people's opinions if every man wanted the woman with the same body type the same weight the same age the same background the same everything what would be the purpose men like variety men like options men will like there's not a billionaire on this planet that will buy one dream car and never buy another car again because it has everything you know that he wants Hence why you have to continue to grow, to reinvent yourself. You got to continue to keep it spicy. You have to continue to date. A lot of you women are trying to get out of the dating phase and you're trying to say, fancy, I want to get married. How do you get the ring? Even when you get the ring, you have to date your man. You have to date your husband or it's over. Why put yourself in a situation where you're married temporarily until he finds someone that wants to date him you need to perfect the dating technique that's what you need to do honestly it's a lot but at the end of the day it's gonna be a lot to do everything alone it's gonna be a lot to deal with busters dusters <laughs> dusters it's gonna be a lot and all we all all of us are doing are get, is getting older so we're going to get into Colton and Katie. Katie is in, I believe she's in her 40s. And Colton, I believe he's in his teens. Maybe he's 19. I think he's in his teens because he still lives with his parents. And um, let's introduce Katie. Katie Hamilton. I'm 37 and I'm from Dallas, Texas. Ex-husband, Josh Hamilton, came here for his job. He was a Major League Baseball player for almost a decade. Say my estimated net worth according to Google, is $10 million. Marriage ended due to my husband, substance abuse issues, and just some personal battles that he was dealing with. But we still share custody of our four daughters. You know, the divorce was definitely not something I would have done. And just, you know, still sorting through how to raise my kids in a way that I didn't anticipate. It took me four years to even think about dating, but I'm there now. Now these Katie's are something else. We didn't have Kate, Katie's, uh, we didn't have them all. And they are just, listen here, if you're a Katie and you're watching a Caitlin, a Catherine, a Katrina, uh, whatever, <laughs> I guess even a me, <laughs> one of my old, uh, a history teachers used to call me Katie instead of KT with a T K D with a because my real name, yeah. But regardless, <laughs> I guess I'm one of the Katie's. I don't know. <laughs> so these Katie's are out of line. Listen here, they're taking the cake for us. Like we cannot allow them to speak for us. Okay. <laughs> so uh, um, yeah. So she was married. She has grown kids that are just, you know, entering college and she's desperate and lonely enough that she flirted and entertained one of her daughter's friends. And this young boy still lives with his parents. She doesn't have to work for the rest of her life and she's lonely and instead of you know what I mean she's still a pretty girl um she still could get out there and you know network with people wealthy people and mix and mingle and she could she could even pay for a matchmaker she can afford it but instead she wants a young boy that's her daughter's age that can't give her anything but eggplant and a headache 
because his parents seem to be good parents and and again the the stereotype is whoever's the oldest whoever has the most money they're the one in control so she's the oldest and she has the most money and they want to do want to know what a well-to-do divorcee that's had multiple kids that you know what I mean can find her you know a man her age to be a father figure for her children that's the thing you're bringing in a boy who doesn't even know how to live on his own doesn't even know how to survive doesn't have any kids that's still a child himself and you're putting him in a situation to be a father figure of your children how again ladies you have to want more for yourself than than this this is ridiculous and i know you know what i mean people are like well love doesn't have a color or an age or you know love free i stated this before in other non-western cultures people get married because of the family that they came from you know what I mean? Um, the potential of them being hard workers, successful, and being able to, you know, be a good father figure, a good mother, a good, you know, good values, good morals to raise healthy, successful children to in return do the same thing over and over and over again for the bloodline, for the families. And nowadays, these women are just trying to have a baby with whoever and hope that that's going to keep him or hope that that's going to turn him or make him into the man that you need them to be but you cannot you cannot raise a grown man you cannot be a man's mother and expect him to keep you as his wife you just can't let's get into colton <laughs> My name's Colton. I'm 23 and I'm from Denton, Texas. But I decided I wanted to focus on my music, so I eventually dropped out of college. All the shots you take, I ain't ever go away. May not have a lie, but I'm here to stay. <laughs> the only groupie I have is Katie. <laughs> hey. Hey. So it appears that it's a lot of drama. But with Colton, he's still trying to figure out who he is as a man. He's still trying to figure out what he wants to do with his life. He's still trying to figure out, um, he's still trying to figure out a lot. He's just, you know, going with the flow. And the reason why it appears that he loves this woman so much is because it's something that he has to chase after. He's fighting against, it's that Romeo and Juliet type of love. Everybody's, well, how does Akon say? Don't nobody want to see us together, but it don't matter, no. It's because when a man has to chase in any kind of way, if he has to chase because you are unattainable and he's still trying to prove himself over and over again, if he's trying to chase because, you know, he's trying to get you away from the guy who's a no good, if he's trying to chase because you don't want him, if he's trying to chase because the families and the friends and nobody want to see y'all together, a man is going to chase. Colton is chasing this love because again, it's cool to have a woman with a lot of money. And yes, a lot of teenager boys do have a, a thing, a fetish with older women like Stacy's mom got it going on, okay? And so it's just like a young and mature type of thing. And it's not something that can last. And it's not something a mother would. Like, that's like, I'm 29. I'm not going to be with no 19-year-olds. I'm a mom. Dude, what can you do for my kid? What kind of example? What kind of role model? And nowadays, you have to protect your kids, especially from, you know, these young men, boys. Like, you don't want to be with a man who has nothing to offer and him being a role model to your child. So your child becomes... Oh, where Colton doesn't have to have a job. Colton's being taken care of by a woman. Colton this, Colton that. And then he turns out to be just like his stepdad, Colton. And the next woman came from a family with sense. The next woman's moms and families watched my channel and raised their daughter not to settle for a man who can't offer them anything. And so now that daughter is not going to go for your son because your son ain't nothing. He's a dusty. He's a no good ninja. So you you setting your son up to be 
single forever with trifling women and to be a bad father or to be living in your house for the rest of his life. It's like as women, we have to do better with who we reproduce with. As women, we have to do better with who we give our bodies to. We have to do better with who... I had this same issue with so many women. Fancy, oh, I see him as someone that I would date in real life. So I turn off the sugaring and the business and work to, you know, treat him like a normal person. So you have requirements and standards for a man that you temporarily want access to his money. But you don't have those same standards and requirements to a man that you would have a kid with that you would spend the rest of your life with a man who is going to affect your present and future make this make sense make it make sense i'm and the reason why noni and reese and katie and colton didn't have much of a storyline because these boys, grown boys, don't really have anything to offer. So what can we show? Reese is homeless. Colton is homeless. He still lives with his family. Um, Reese, I mean, Noni and Katie have, has lived a nice life. They're used to being taken care of. They're used to the finer things. And at this point, they work so hard and I tell you women, go ahead and focus on school mainly, focus on business, focus on becoming successful, focus on being that independent woman, focus on all of that and take that break from dating and see where it ends, where you end up. Single, alone, desperate and like John T, like Noni and like Katie. You're just gonna be willing to accept it anything because you didn't work on your femininity you didn't make being a wife a priority you didn't make attracting an alpha provider a high value man there's already a limited high value man and with that being said you're you think that your success going to graduating from an ivy league school you know amount of money that you make is going to attract a high value man in return it's going to attract a dusty a dusty that wants to leech off of you a dusty that wants to use you and level up from you because you didn't care enough about yourself to level yourself up so that means that you love this man through everything through his circumstances but you don't love yourself through your cir circumstances and you expect that this man is going to be so grateful to you and stay with you forever in reality he's going to leave you for a woman he feels as though he can be that man to, you did it to yourself. You just created somebody's husband. And thank you. Because <laughs> if my man don't come already leveled up, that's not my man. Like, I need, I, I need y'all, I need these women to continue to raise these grown boys, you know, and get them on the right track so they can bring that success over here. Like, stop in the cycle don't be that girl don't be that girl so uh, um katie and colton then broke up because you know the families the daughter of katie is upset mom why would you hide this why would you talk to my friend this is so embarrassing ruining her daughter's life and then colton's family is just like what is this grown woman wanting with you like mom had some tough questions for me. I'm sure. When Colton told his mom about our relationship, he told me that she's cried several times. What are y'all gonna get? We're both gonna get the chicken. Oh. As his parents, our concern comes more toward, you know, you. Is Katie taking advantage of him? Is she using him for a boy toy? That. So why would someone who could go do something else with anybody, why is she with my son? They're thinking that they um, that this grown woman just wants a boy toy, someone to control, someone to be pretty arm candy, because that's the thing. A lot of these older men want to relive their youth. A lot of women, older women with money, they want to relive their youth. They want to live in this fantasy that they can have anybody that they want. They want to live in this fantasy that, you know what I mean, with them being successful and having all this to offer and being great women and being able to pro provide a lifestyle that these men are going to really want them for them. And the case is that is not likely. It's not likely. 
Now you're going to say, fancy, well, what about this person and this person? Again, how many people can you count that it truly worked? And at the end, do you know what is going on behind closed doors? So reconsider what you want for yourself. Reconsider what you deserve. Reconsider what your worth is. Reconsider, you know, your happily ever after. And I can't want it for you if you don't want it for yourself. So I hope you like this video. I wanted to get it out before I started, um, before I left to Miami. So please forgive me. I'm over here um, all comfy in my chair. <laughs> I'm over here comfy. Um, I just wanted to get this video out. Um, I'm currently doing a vlog. So um, look out for that. Um, in addition to that, I'm waist training. <sighs> I'm waist training so if you don't have my waist trainer what are you doing again we need to sit here and become the best versions of ourselves that we can be and if you're not into working out and stuff like that but you want to sit here and keep that tummy tight definitely train your waist definitely invest into yourself definitely go the extra mile that other women aren't willing to go so you can sit here and get the result that the other women won't be getting because they're not willing to put in the work. I get exhausted. Yes, I get overwhelmed. Yes, I become over it. But at the end of the day, I'm willing to do that work over and over and over again, even once I get married, even once I get my husband, even once I get that lifestyle, because at the end of the day, it's not going to end there. It's not going to stop. It's not going to be over. I'm not going to have to stop, you know, um, keeping myself up for my husband. I'm not going to have to, I'm not going to stop you know what I mean? Dating my husband. I'm not going to stop, you know, putting up with BS. I'm not going to stop hustling and making my money and um, taking my husband's money and putting it to the side in a little private bank account for myself. I'm just not going to stop. So why not get used to it and make it a lifestyle? I don't know, but I hope you like this. I might do a... Uh, Bill and Brie um and the next one because I do have some things to say about them their relationship is not perfect a lot of girls like to uh lean toward them that's the ideal sugar daddy sugar baby it's not yes she's getting money but you know what I mean all money's not good money and I feel as though there's some things to discuss if you ladies are like me we're getting money from sugar daddies older men wealthy men affluent men you know what I mean I want you to know what's healthy what's not what to look for what you should be expecting what's unacceptable and sometimes it's just not worth it so uh, um, I hope you like this video um, I love you girls y'all are everything I'm super excited about this Las Vegas trip at this point we have six girls who have paid and reserved their spot I don't know if I'm gonna close it at seven girls or eight girls um, so at this point I have one or two spots again continue to check in especially if you haven't seen you know anything that says closed because these girls are trying to hustle to get this money to get to this event because this is going to be the event of 2020 like when I tell you listen don't be one of those people who it was possible for you to come and you didn't slept on it don't do that don't do it so I have one or two spots still open so definitely hit me up um the event is from mm, October 30th to November 1st we're checking in that Friday. Check out is that Sunday. And we about to make some money. Period. In that order. So be getting your costumes together. And yeah. And also um, be ready to make some girlfriends. Like I was telling you girls. If you're in a situation where. Um, if you're in a situation where you're in a bad relationship, you're just getting out of a relationship, you need to surround yourself with like-minded um, like women. Um, inquire about the Sugar Baby group. We had one of our girls go live. She did a step-by-step -step makeup tutorial. We had a girl do a um, 
an outfit, how she would dress on a date night, showed us seven to eight outfits, different heel options, how to turn lingerie to like a classy look, how to sit here and put a trench coat with, you know, more of a, a casual classy outfit with a more upscale classy extra outfit. Y'all, we, we be having fun and the girls be going live. They be, you know what I mean? Just talking, networking, bonding, you know, growing, learning. And again, we can't force you to sit here and snatch that waist. We can't force you to care about the way you look. We can't force you to sit here and emotionally and mentally, you know, take on avenues that's going to sit here and help you build that confidence, build that self-love, build that self-esteem, help on that journey if you don't want it for yourself. So if you haven't already, please inquire. Um, the group is private. Um, anybody that's in a group, um, the, only the people in the group can see who, who's in the group. Um, in addition to that, only the people in the group can see who posts. And again, it's not open for everyone. It is a membership fee, which shows that nobody's really trying to spend money and play games. So it's not, you know, anybody like lurking. Everybody has to be active. Everybody has to contribute. And it's a safe, intimate place. So I love it. I love it. I love it. I love you even more. And um, thank you for watching. Have an awesome week. Stay safe, take those vitamins, and I'll see you in the vlog in Miami, okay? Okay. <laughs>